gentle, seductive, caring, fragile, submissive, soft, passive, and sweet. All of these words have one thing in common. All of these words describe the stereotypical ideal woman. Now, I want you all to take a look at me. Look at the way I'm dressed. Look at the way my hair is. Look at how my hands are clasped in front of me. <laughs> Would you be surprised if someone who looks like me started talking to you like this? What if I said words to you like aggressive, established, authoritative, and powerful? Hi, my name is Gordon Wurdenberg, and welcome to my 2024 senior TED Talk. At this point, you might be wondering, why is this crazy lady yelling at me? <laughs> but it kind of has to do with what I'm talking about today, and that is anger expression and women, and more specifically, how anger expression can be used as a tool for women to establish authority and break the harmful gender stereotypes and biases that are placed on them today. I've been studying women and anger for months now, and I have done so much research. <laughs> the initial question that I was researching was, what are the benefits of women expressing their anger, and how does it impact the negative effects that gender inequality and sexism have on women? And the information that I found was pretty interesting, so I just chose to continue talking about this for my TED Talk today. But before I jump right into um, like the impacts that anger expression has on women, we kind of need to understand anger in and of itself and different types of anger expression and things like that, so that's what I'm gonna start off with. Anger is, it's so complex, but generally anger can be described as an antagonism towards someone or something that has that you feel has pur purposefully done you wrong. And um, and anger is considered to be a basic human emotion, which means that it is one of the emotions that is crucial to the human survival like instinct experience. It's one of the emotions that triggers your fight or flight responses. And it's just, it's an emotion that everybody experiences. The way that anger triggers our fight or flight responses is through sending neurotransmitters from your brain to your body. And the specific neurotransmitter that works with anger the most is norepinephrine. Yeah. <laughs> anger in our brains reacts chemically different than people express their anger. And anger expression can generally be broken down into three main like categories. Those are open aggression, assertive anger, and passive aggression. Open aggression is the anger that you get when you're sweaty and your forehead is like really hurting and your fists are clenched and you just feel out of control. Open aggression is like a little child having a tantrum, waving their arms around, yelling. And open aggression is also commonly associated with violence, which is unfortunate because with open aggression, you're not in control of the way that you're that you're feeling, that you're reacting, so you're not in control of your violence either. The next anger expression type is assertive anger, and this is the type of anger that is technically considered to be the most healthy because it's using your rage and kind of that passion that you get when you're angry to take control of a situation. So it's like looking at your conflict, you're, yeah, you're a little fired up, you're feeling a little sassy, but you're gonna remain like calm and cool, and you're gonna like solve that conflict. And the last type of anger expression is passive aggression. Aggression, And this is the type of anger that you hide or internalize. Um, so like imagine my conflict is right here in the middle of the stage. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn my back to it because I just don't wanna deal with that type, of, that type of conflict. And unfortunately, long term, passive aggression has really negative impacts on the person doing it because you're not releasing any of the negative things you're feeling and you're also not solving the conflict that you're running away from. To nobody's surprise, women are most commonly <laughs> associated with passive aggression. And this is because anger displayed by women typically is seen as societally unacceptable since when a woman behaves in any manner that is considered to be unladylike, it decreases her social status as you can see with my social ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and while society has made peace and progress with women's rights throughout the grand scheme of our country's timeline, there is still much work to be done and many women, all women, 
experience some kind of, whether it be microaggression or major aggression, um, from gender inequality today. There are studies done by the United Nations that estimate it could take up to 140 years for women to be represented equally in positions of power and leadership, and 47 years for equal representation in national parliaments. And I believe that the use of anger expression for women could be a way for women to establish authority and hence help speed up some of these numbers. For women, anger expression could be uh, used as a necessary exercise of power and, um, and be a crucial pushing part for pushing past overwhelming feelings of powerlessness, especially in professional settings. Looking at women and um, looking at anger expression in women from a social perspective, when a woman is publicly angry, it forces people witnessing her anger to recognize her frustration, and without it, it can be difficult for a woman who already has a set of preset biases she's trying to get past to put her foot down without expressing some kind of discomfort and making it pretty big and loud. I do want to make it clear, though, that I am not condoning violence in any way, shape, or form. I'm not encouraging the ladies in the room or in the hallway or anywhere to go around and beat people up or anything like that. Really honestly, a simple scowl, um, glare, or frown is enough to trigger the body's fear response and to get a reaction out of somebody. So once it's triggered, you already have increased chances that the afflicted person will submit to the in this scenario, scowling woman. Social studies done on anger expression have found evidence that anger can affect the behavior of others in ways that actually promote goal accomplishment. And it's been proven that when someone publicly expresses their anger, people around them are more likely to support the angry person and at the same time also remove themselves as any sort of opposing force from the angry person. So, Based off of what I've told you thus far, it can be kind of plausible that if a woman were in a difficult situation or she was at work or at the coffee shop and some man was trying to take her a drink or something, if she could just use a little force, use a little bit of authority, that would really help establish her sense of place in our society. Um, but besides creating a sense of authority, Anger expression can be used by women not only to put her foot down, but to also process the negative emotions that she's feeling from having to put her foot down in the first place. Um, anger expression is a useful tool for processing negative emotions that you're feeling. And believe it or not, women today still have lots of things that they need to process. Um, some of those issues that I personally researched were sexual violence, unequal pay, and restricted access to health care. Uh, all of these things increase the body's stress responses over time and can even affect your physical and mental health. Mental health, obviously, issues like depression, anxiety, disorders that women are more susceptible to that require like trying to create a sense of control, like uh, substance abuse disorders, eating disorders, and then the physical component, high blood pressure, and even heart disease. All of this with also considering the pressures that women face to fit into a certain society or stereotype makes it makes it make sense that these pressures could really have negative impacts on a woman's psyche. This is why anger expression could be used as a tool for women to cope. As we briefly mentioned, when anger releases positive endorphins in the brain, it also releases negative emotions. A study done in 2014 by Diner Kashtan found that anger expression increases optimism and even performance when faced with a challenge. It is more than evident that women across the United States face not only personal, but also institutional discriminations across different aspects of their lives, solely based off the fact that they are women. The physical and mental effects of this make it more than difficult to just make it through everyday life. Um, with the constant pressures to conform to a stereotypical portrayal of femininity, femininity, it is totally understandable to why some women feel out of place in this country, and that is why I want to encourage women to be loud and unconventional with their anger. Anger expression is a straightforward way for women to establish authority and process the negative emotions that come from living in an unstable society. Anger expression could be the first step 
towards destigmatizing the norms that have been placed around conventional femininity, and there is a lot of hint and power within the expression of anger. For women, anger is much more than just an emotion. For women, anger is the breaking of a lifetime worth of stereotypes, labels, and restraints. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to move into Q&A. How long was that? Uh, 10, 10, 17. 10, 17. You have to call them. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, what costs do women, like, why don't women feel like they can express their anger? What are some of the concrete costs that I, they face or negative impacts that they face? I feel like that there's a lot of judgment and, like, like, I don't know the word for them, but like, there are like words that are placed onto certain types or certain groups of people. And for women, like, I can't curse, but like crazy B word. Like, there are just like a lot of social, there's a lot of social stigmatism around outspoken women and how outspoken she's allowed to be. And while like a woman isn't gonna be placed into jail for speaking her mind, she could get shunned from her community. And it hurts to have people talk bad about you. So it's, it's not, there's not concrete parts of living in the United States that are like, make it illegal for women to express their minds, but there are these kind of preset, like just ideals that we all withhold within ourselves that we get from childhood based on the way that we're raised and the types of like things that we see in the media, like pink is for girls and blue is for boys that kind of just like slowly over time shape the way that we think even if it's subconscious. And I actually know a lot of girls my age who have these kind of preset biases already about wanting to be a feminist, but not wanting to be a feminazi. They don't want to be too feminist. So it's just this kind of like moral thing that also impacts the way that you're perceived socially. Grayson? How do men wield anger currently? And how is that different? I, I mean, I can't. I can't speak for how all men wield anger, but I do know that anger displayed by men is more acceptable. So it doesn't really matter how hmm. men wield anger because they're not really being like persecuted for it. When men wield anger, it's seen as a strength and something that brings them up. And like, yeah, he's a good leader in the business conference. But when women do that, it's not the same. Right? Is there, is there a a positive repercussion to s some woman who's having anger, who, who's not just, who is not in the right connotation.